visiting us at Eternal Food Ministry, where we share the bread of life. We not only preach the gospel, but we help those who are in need of food assistance. We help people in emergency food needs from loss of job, death in the family, sickness, in between jobs, delayed paychecks, and other unforeseen circumstances. This is because we believe in providing for the physical to touch the inner hunger. Now, let's join Josephine Zion for the spiritual food on the Bread Broadcast. God bless you. Praise God. Praise God. Let the people of God say Amen. Amen. I welcome you to the Bread Broadcast. It's always good to come back so we can share the Word of God. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about succeeding after failing. What better topic is there to talk about, to look back to 2016 and see the year in review as we prepare to go into 2017. Uh, but before we start, let's give honor to whom it is due, God Almighty. Close your eyes and bow your head to Jesus Christ and let us pray. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us to the end of 2016. We honor you, we praise you. Thank you for safety. Thank you, O Lord, for your blessings and all the benefits you have given unto us through this year. And Father, even as we await 2017, we ask, O oh Lord, that you, through your word, speak to us so we can see what we didn't do quite right in 2016 and give us the grace to be honest and to tackle those things even as we go into 2017 so that we can glorify your holy name as we live a better life uh, for 2017. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name I we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, our case study is Simon Peter. And I love Simon Peter a lot because I can relate to this uh, apostle of the Lord. Uh, he is he's such a character that um, uh, he, he, he didn't come from a rich background. He didn't go to school. He was a fisherman. Uh, he went to Harvard University of fish, for fishing, you see. Uh, that's all he knew all his life and he has this impetuous bombastic nature as an individual uh, but with all his imperfection with all his mistakes Jesus went for this guy Jesus went for Simon Peter uh, he was the first of the disciples that Jesus called and he later became the leader of the first century church in Jerusalem so I, I, it gives me a lot of hope when I look at somebody like Simon Peter. Uh, so today we want to look at his life, how God used the life of Simon Peter to teach us how to succeed after failing. So without uh, wasting time, let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 31. We stop at 34. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. But he said to him, this is Peter speaking now, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Then the Lord said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny three times that you know me. Okay? So we have two operative words in our, to in our topic. Succeeding. Failing. So, Let's first define what is failure, okay? What is failure? Please listen, listen, please. 
Failure is not getting it wrong. Please. Failure is not the number of attempts it takes to get it right. All right? Are you following this? What is failure? Failure is refusal to work toward getting it right. After getting it wrong previously, having come to the understanding that you goofed, having come to the understanding that that wasn't the best decision that you made, Zion, if now I fail to work toward doing it right for the second chance I'm having, that is failure. Okay, now what is success? This really threw me off when I was doing this, uh, the research for this sermon. I came across so many dictionary meanings of success, but this very one stood out and you want to listen to it because it's really crazy. It says, and I quote, an attainment of popularity or profit. I was like, Popularity or profit, that is success? Really? Then if that was true, then the Bible was wrong. And life itself is wrong. We have so many popular, non-worldwide figures, people, celebrities. They have money. They are popular, but I can't pray in the world that my life should turn out like their lives. That's not success. What is success? Let's look at it from the biblical point of view and how God sees success. Success is doing all you can legally and morally, biblically allowed. Giving all you can, being all you can, toward achieving the purpose which God has set before you. Legally right, morally right, biblically allowed. To be all you can, to do all you can, to give all you can toward the purpose that God has set before you. That is success. I like to tell people, there's nowhere Jesus said in the Bible that you will receive crowns for how many souls that you convert or you converted no you will be rewarded on your faithfulness how many people each time God gives you the opportunity to talk about Jesus to tell them what Jesus has done for you that he can do for them each time you do that you are adding stars to your crown you are adding stars to your crown because not everybody that hears you preach will come to Jesus. No, not everybody, unfortunately. But God is so faithful that if you are faithful and you are always taking that opportunity, God will now bring that uh, uh, outcome of you seeing somebody getting saved through you or somewhere along the line, the seed that you are planted in their lives, and another Christian talks to them, God will make that to germinate, and they come to Jesus, and God will re reward you. So for people who feel like, oh, I preach to people, but they always turn me down, so I'm not going to do it again. No, you have not failed. No, you have not failed. Keep speaking. Keep speaking. Okay? So what can lead to failure number one looking at our case study simon peter the number one that led to his failure was unguarded strength unguarded strength peter's strength was his courage he was a courageous individual but that strength became his weakness when he trusted in his courage rather than ponder on what Jesus said. You see, from the text that we read from the beginning, uh, in that 
uh, uh, Luke chapter 22. Jesus said, Simon, Simon, <laughs> you are going to deny me. Say, oh no, Lord, I'm ready to die with you, even to prison and to death. He didn't even think about it, you see, because he knew that he, nothing scares Simon. We're talking Simon, okay? Simon that will cuss you out. If you're not listening to him, he will cut your ear off, okay? He, this guy didn't care. So he's like, mm -mm. Andrew can do that. James can do that. Mm -mm. Not big old Simon Peter. No, sir. He trusted his courage because that was his strength. What is your own strength? Huh? Don't focus on your weakness alone. You want to watch your strength too. Okay? Because if you don't guard your strength, it, the devil can use it against you and it will become weakness. Jesus allowed what happened to Peter, not because Jesus wanted Peter to fall, no, but to show us what can cause us to stumble. Jesus wants us to learn from Peter. An unguarded strength is as terrible as a weakness and capable of causing the same damage that a known weakness can cause, you see? Because if you know your weakness, you are always on alert. You are very, very careful. You are very aware, this is my weakness. But in the area of strength, we all tend to go, I'm good, I'm good. But that can also become a weakness if we are not careful. Let's go to the book of Song of Solomon. Chapter 2, verse 15. It says, Catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. Believe it or not, God has put tender grapes into your life that we bring joy to other people, that we bring joy to God Almighty. God has put some things in your life with which you will touch the lives of other people, the next generation in your family, around you, that when you are long gone, people will be talking about you. I talk about my grandmother almost, I don't know, but at least once a week, I always say something about my grandmother. She's been long gone since 2005, but guess what? The seed that she has planted in my life, they are still speaking. Those are the tender grapes from my grandmother's life you see so god has put some tender grapes into your lives but these are not big things that we want to destroy them little little things we need to be careful folks we need to be careful an unguarded strength is an uncharted wreck is a wreck waiting to happen unless timely attention is applied so you want to review your 2016 life. Where did your strength lead to weakness? Because you didn't guard it. Okay. Moving on. Peter failed on that night because of untapped support. Untapped support. Peter decided to follow Jesus alone. And from afar. So number one, he was alone. Number two, he was far away from Jesus. Anytime you are far away from Jesus, you are looking for trouble. I'm telling you. Had Peter stayed back to pray, or even be in the same place with the other disciples, the story could have been different. Of course, like we said in the first uh, part of this lesson, uh, this had to happen to Peter anyway, because Peter would not be able to change the prophecy that Jesus spoke about him. You see, it's got to happen to Peter, but for you and I, it doesn't have to happen. No, Peter was just an example. That's why it had to happen to Peter, okay? After this incident, Peter never did anything by himself again. Go read your Bible except when he was praying on the rooftop at Joppa. 
in the house of Simon the Tanner. That was the only time the Bible records that uh, Apostle Peter was by himself. He was praying on the rooftop. When he went to Tabitha to raise Tabitha up, he went with people. When he visited the house of Cornelius, he was there with people. When he was set before the Sahindran to, 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 to answer questions uh, about why he kept preaching the gospel, he was not alone by himself. After that incident, Apostle Peter was never alone. Who is your support? Huh? I always say it on this, on this program. Don't run to people that cannot help you spiritually. You see, when something hits that you didn't expect, your number one place that you call, the number, person, uh, the number one person you call is Jesus Christ. Okay? You cry out, Jesus, this is way beyond me. What am I going to do? After you finish praying, who do you turn to? Look for your spiritual support. If your friendship with somebody is not based on because you read the Bible together or because you pray together, listen up. You are in the wrong friendship. You want your friendship to be based on something spiritual. You want your friendship to be based on we pray together, we study the word of God together. The Bible says, iron sharpened iron. So a man uh, brightens up the countenance of his friend okay so don't look for support where it there is no support look for support that it has spiritual root in jesus christ okay so when something happens having cried to god then look for your support connect to your support ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 to 10 two are better than one Look, you don't know more than God. Jesus said, two, two are better than one. Okay? Because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is all alone when he falls. For he has no one to help him out. If you look at the picture on our slide, you will see that one of those athletes, one has fallen already, but the other one is pulling him up. That's the power of support. Look where you are falling in the year 2016 by relying on yourself. Even though maybe you prayed or you didn't pray, that's one lack of support. God is your number one support. Did you tap into your support in 2016? To walk alone is to be stuck alone. Remember that. So we have talked about two things that made him fall on the night of his faith trial. Number one was unguarded strength. Number two was untapped support. Now let's look at the third thing that made him fall. Ungodly sodality. Ungodly sodality. That is comradeship, friendship, your companionship. Peter did not flock with the disciples on the night of his faith trial but he decided to sit with people that hate jesus haters of jesus who were part of the crowd that asked for jesus to be crucified moment of faith trials are cold nights in people's lives believe me it may be a hot summer day of texas but if there's something bombarding you if you're under some pressures of life it's a cold night okay so when things happen and you feel like you are boxed in who do you sit with it is important who you sit with in your trying times just as any other times of your life comradeship of friendship has a lot to do in the success or failure of the journey of life. The book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 20. Proverbs 13, 20. It says, He who walks with the wise man will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. 
Did you see that? A lot of people are in jail right now. Not because they did what they were accused of doing. I'm telling you. But because they moved with the wrong crowd. Guess what? Boom. They were cutted off with the wrong people. So many people have died who shouldn't have died. But because they wouldn't keep moving with the wrong folks, it happened in the Bible too. A young man by the name of Jonathan. His dad was the first king of Israel, Saul. And he knew that he was supposed to be the assistant to David when David became the king. But because he could not move away from his dad who rejected God and who wanted David dead. Guess what? He was killed with his father. So who is your friend when things are wrong? Who is your friend when things are right? The friends you keep in your good times, they will have a lot to say about your life just as the ones you keep in your bad times. You want to re uh, reassess your friendship base. This new year we are going into. If it's not uh, helpful spiritually, you may want to say goodbye. I believe it was Dave Marvin that said, the wrong people will not leave your boat voluntarily. You have to kick them off. You have to kick them off. So to keep a bad company, is to seek a bad functioning. Remember, this, this, this is like two sides of a coin, of the same coin. And uh, in untapped support, he had the disciples, Simon Peter, but he refused to stay with the disciples. Now, he is hanging out with the wrong folks. You see, those are two sides of the same coin. You want to assess your own life too. Amen. Now, having talked about what made Simon Peter fail on the night of his trial. Now let's talk about how did he succeed after failing? How can you, how can I succeed after failing? And believe me, I didn't get so many things right coming out. But with the grace of God, by the grace of God, I, I, I'm learning. I'm learning. Okay. So you can learn too. So don't think it's over for you. No, the devil is a liar. How can you succeed after failing? Number one, recognizing the wrong. Peter didn't come up with extenuating circumstances that led him to deny Jesus. No, he did not. He didn't argue nor play the blame game. He didn't say the devil made me do it. No, the devil didn't. He recognized his sin immediately. When you say, Lord, I'm wrong. You're right. I, no, you, you know what? I have no excuse. Just forgive me. That's the number one step in the right direction. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 22, verse 61 to 62. Luke 22, 61 and following. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord. How he said to him, before the rooster crow, you will deny me three times. So Peter, watch this, went out and wept bitterly. You see, Peter didn't say, I rebuke you devil, you made me do this. Oh Jesus, why did you have to say that over me? That wouldn't have happened. No, Peter remembered and he said, Ooh, I did what I was not supposed to do. He went outside. He left the horrible group he was keeping, left outside, and he cried bitterly. Okay? So to put focus where it should be is to put first, put it first where it should be. When you put your focus on where it should be, was the problem me? Was the problem the, the way I, I did that thing, what exactly, when you zero in on the problem, on the source of the problem, and always start with yourself, please. Always start with me. Because I'm telling you, your number one enemy is me, you, before you start looking outside. Okay? So when you zero in and focus on yourself, 
when something happens, you won't take it out on people around you. You won't fuss at them. And they are going, what? what's wrong with that? What's wrong with them? No. Put the focus where it should be. And let the Holy Spirit open your eyes to see what you did wrong and how you can correct it. Amen. Moving on. You repent from the wrong. Okay, the first thing Simon Peter did was recognizing the wrong and now he's repenting from the wrong. Having realized that he had betrayed his loyalty and friendship to Jesus by denying Jesus, Peter, Peter not only cried, but from then committed his life to the cause of Jesus for the rest of his life. He never called back from standing up for the Lord again. Uh, this is quite. Uh, this is a little bit uh, of a long read, but we will rush through it. The book of Acts, chapter five, verse twenty-seven to twenty-nine. Acts five twenty-seven to twenty-nine. And when they have brought them, they set them before the council. This is talking about the disciples now with Peter. And the high priest asked them, saying. Did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name, that is the name of Jesus? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood, that is Jesus' blood, on us. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. You see, he didn't shrank back he didn't call it back he wasn't scared anymore he's like mm -mm. you got me one time but it's not gonna happen again the first time that peter failed and he denied jesus if a little girl that said hey i know you and he said i don't know i don't i don't know jesus that you're talking about yeah i know you i've seen you with this jesus i don't know what you're talking about girl a young lady a young girl but right here, he's standing before the council. The same uh, high priest and the group of people that took Jesus to uh, Pontius Pilate. The same people were changed. He repented. And he said, you know what? I don't care if you kill me. I'm not going to fail my Lord again. That's it. To repent, we did this about seven weeks ago in one of our lessons. To repent is to change the course and um, change from going the wrong path and change, changing the course 180 degrees. That's what uh, Simon Peter did. So as you are reviewing your steps, your way in 2016, you want to see those areas where you need to also repent. Change the course from what you did in 2016 that wasn't right now you want to do it right in 2017 by the grace of God. To desist from wrong work is to resist the wrong source. Moving on. The third thing that uh, Apostle uh, Peter did was running to the Lord. Running to the Lord. He recognized the wrong. He repented from the wrong. Now he's running to the Lord. On hearing that the Lord had risen, Peter was the first of the disciples to run to the tomb to find it empty. Rather than coil away in shame, Peter knew that the Lord was the only way out for him to become strong in the face of subsequent temptations to deny the Lord. So Peter ran toward Jesus and not away from Jesus. It's common sense, isn't it? When you have a broken leg or a, a gash, a deep gash on the forehead, you don't go shopping, do you? No. No same person does that. You go to the hospital. You need a doctor. It's the same way. When you sin, do not run away from Jesus. That's your spiritual doctor. Sin is a spiritual sickness. So when that happens, run to Jesus. Don't run away from Jesus. Let's go to the book of Acts 21, verse 7 to 8. And I need to run, really. Therefore, 
That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, this was after the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus had appeared to them two times and then they didn't know what to do again. So Simon said, I'm going fishing. So two other disciples, they went with him and Jesus now appeared on the seashore and they didn't know it was Jesus. So Jesus said, cast your net to the side because they had been fishing all night and they didn't catch anything. So when they cast their net and they pulled large number of fish, the net was filled up. Then the disciple that Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. You see, now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment because he had removed it and plunged into the sea. What did he do? He was swimming to Jesus. The other disciples came in the little boat. They came after my brother Peter. He went swimming. He couldn't wait for the boat. The boat was too slow for him. He jumped into the sea and swam to the, to the, to the seashore. For they were not far from land, but about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish. He didn't see the fish. He didn't wait for the disciples. He swam to Jesus. That's the kind of person that Simon Peter was. Are you running away from Jesus too? Or you are running toward him? Which one are you doing? Because you are sinned. So what? Run to Jesus. The devil can't help you. It will just destroy you the more. Swim to Jesus. Okay? Don't wait for anybody. Swim to Jesus like Simon Peter. To run to the Lord when we sin is to run to the Lord to be clean. Okay? To run to the Lord when we sin is to run to the Lord to be clean. Remember that. The next thing Simon Peter did, and I keep calling him apostle, uh, is repeating the wrong. Repeating the wrong. As expected, Apostle Peter, now an apostle, was faced with numerous opportunities to deny the Lord due to the threats, beatings, and imprisonments that came with being a disciple of Jesus in the first century. Nevertheless, none of these dissuaded Peter from standing firm for his faith in Christ Jesus. Peter, are you ready for this? Was eventually martyred. He was killed for his faith. But he was only too glad to succeed where it once appeared like he failed. 1 Peter 2.19 1 Peter 2.19 For this is commendable. He, because of conscience toward God, one endures grief, suffering wrongfully. This was a man who was scared of suffering wrongfully before, and he denied Jesus. But now he's saying, you know what? It's worth it. Don't worry about it. 1 Peter 3.14 1 Peter 3.14 says, But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed, you see, and do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. Don't be afraid. The same Apostle Peter that denied Jesus three times said, I never knew that guy. Uh-uh. No. He said, don't be afraid of their threats. Are they threatening you at work? Because you will not do something that is ungodly. Don't be afraid of their threats. No. Stand firm for Jesus. Stand firm in the face of trouble. You will see that Jesus will not only see you through. He will be with you in that trouble. And go through that trouble with you. To try again is to thrive again. Let me say that again. To try again is to thrive Again, so don't say, oh, I tried this in 2016. I'm not going to go there. Uh-uh. If it's something that God is asking you to do, listen. Do what you have to do in the name of Jesus. Check. Go to the drawing board. Check what you did wrong. Repent and run to Jesus and go back again. Do it again. Okay? Don't run away from the devil. Don't run away from challenges. Go back and do it in Jesus' name. 
If it's something that God said you can do, listen. You don't know more than God. If God says you can do it, listen. You can do it. Okay? So repeat the run in 2017 in Jesus' name. So, as 2016 is coming to an end, where can you say you have stumbled? The problem like I've been saying throughout this lesson, is not in your stumbling. No. The crux of the matter is in your returning. You're returning back from the wrong road to the right path. That is the only way to, straight, to straighten what, what is crooked. And is the only way to strengthen what is newly created. Jesus is the only one who can help you do that. He's the only one. He's the only one who can do the impossible and give you the unbelievable. Okay? So let him lead in 2017. And let him be with you in 2017. And begin to watch how events unfold as you travel with Jesus in 2017. Okay? Now, if you don't know Jesus, listen. Nothing is going to change. If you are saying, I didn't like how, how my life turned out in 2016, unless you are ready to let Jesus lead you, it's not going to change. Seriously. He's signing up for failure up front. But that can change. Okay? If you click the left uh, top corner of this screen, it will take you to Want to know Jesus page of our website? There you will see what you need to do. We explain the plan of salvation of God for you. And there's a small prayer that you say there. Get a Bible. Start from the Gospel of John. And read at least 15 minutes minimum every day. You can do more than that. And look for a Bible believing Jesus preaching church. Remember, we talked about support. Christianity is not a Lone Ranger uh, journey. No, you need support. Okay? And begin to watch how Jesus guides your life, how he guides your life in 2017. And you, you can now compare by December of 2017 to where your life is right now, if Jesus has not arrived by, by that time. Okay? And you will see the difference in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father Lord. Before I let you go, before we go into 2017, let us pray together. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We have listened to your word. Oh, Lord, give us the grace to follow through by acting on your word so that our lives can turn out better, more glorious, more useful for you in 2017. In Jesus' name, have we prayed. Amen. Amen. I will see you next week if Jesus has not split the sky open.